sharing the truth one fact at a time. This is the Free America Radio Network. Hi, folks. This is the Wayne S. Pierce Show podcast for the 26th of June 2014. How are you today? Yeah, I figured I'd start doing some podcasts, uh, short ones, you know, usually uh, anywhere between a half hour to an hour. Um, I figure, why not? <laughs> you know. So, hey, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, whatever it is, you can email me at freeamericaradio at usa.com. Freeamericaradio at usa.com. And uh, I would love to hear from you. Really would. Uh, so just uh, send me your email. And uh, <clears throat> speaking of which, you hear that little ding, that's my email. <laughs> so I'd like to see your name in it. Email me, freeamericaradio at usa.com. Freeamericaradio at usa.com. You can go to uh, the web, the web, if I can speak today, you can go to the website at uh, the Wayne S. Pierce Show, uh, dot Weebly dot com and uh, check out the site there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, if, again, if you have any questions, no question is off limits. Ask me anything you like. If I don't know, I will tell you I don't know. Uh, email me at freeamericaradio at usa.com. Freeamericaradio at usa.com. And on today's show, we will have... Uh, I will give you a few things that... Um, well, let's just say drudgereport.com... Check this out. Uh, from Breitbart.com, White House Press Secretary, we're not just going to sit around and wait for Congress to write laws. Now, I, I want to make sure that you understand what's going on. He just basically, the White House Press Secretary, the new one, uh, Jay Johnson, or no, excuse me, that's Homeland Security Secretary, um, <clears throat> Josh Ernest uh, literally said the president's going to be a dictator. Okay? Just right off the top of the list. We're not going to sit around and wait for Congress to write laws. <clears throat> so he said that basically the president is a dictator. Okay? President Obama tried... Uh, Tired of waiting for Congress to act on immigration reform is currently exploring exploring ways to address issues with Department of Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson. During an interview with MSNBC's Chuck Todd, the White House Press Secretary, Josh Ernest, Ernest explained that the Obama administration was getting impatient with Congress. Quote, we're not just going to sit around and wait uh, interminably, interminably for Congress. You see, they use these big, giant words. <laughs> he said, we're not going to sit around and wait for Congress. Uh, we've been waiting a year already. The president has tasked, his, has tasked his Secretary of Homeland Security, Jay Johnson, with reviewing what options are available to the president, what is at his disposal, using his creative authority to try to address some of the problems that have been created by our broken immigration system, unquote. Ernest added that although Obama was exploring executive action, it was, quote, not a substitute for robust congressional action, unquote, on immigration reform. Quote, that's why we're trying to focus on getting that done, unquote, he concluded. Obama was heavily criticized after his 2012 executive decision to defer the deportations of some young uh, illegal immigrants, which uh, critics argue was a key incentive for more children to cross the border illegally. Um, I'm putting that up on the uh, Free America Radio uh, Facebook page and also the Wayne S. Pierce Show Facebook page. Um, the, the bottom line is, he's a freaking dictator, okay? that That's just the way it is. He, he's, he's a dictator. And he's going to nail the co uh, nail the coffin shut on the sovereignty and freedoms of the United States of America. Period. End of sentence. Now, if you you know want to sit out there and call me a fearmonger and all that good, 
uh, garbage, then you go right ahead and keep your head stuck in the sand because that's exactly what he's doing. Now, <clears throat> let me uh, let me let me let me go on with this here. Um, I've just posted it on both the Free America Radio Facebook page and the Wayne S. Pierce Show Facebook page. I will be talking about that later. And what does that word mean? Interminable, interminably. What does that mean? It means being or seeming to be without an end, endless, ty- uh, tiresomely long and tedious. In other words, <clears throat> they're basically, <clears throat> excuse me, they're basically saying that Congress is taking too long to, to open the borders. So, what did he do? What did the president, what did this dictator-in-chief, this Muslim Brotherhood basketball dribbling (laughs) member of, you know, Manchurian candidate do? What did he do? He opened the borders anyway. He said, well, we're going to take buses down there. We're going to transfer, you know, people from Texas to Arizona. We're just going to move them around. And then we're just going to let them off the bus and they can do whatever they want. Hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of people have just crossed the border from Central America to Mexico. MS-13, Mexico's biggest and more, most dangerous street gang, is now in America. They've been in America for 10 to 15 years down in Southern California and Arizona. But now it's just, hey, open borders, there you go. So the president said, and and even the press secretary said that the president's waited too long, Congress has waited too long, so now the president's going to take executive action. Well, isn't that lovely? (laughs) He basically said that, uh, you know, it's a dictatorship. The president is now a dictator, and Congress is taking too long, so he's just going to take these executive actions, and that's just the way it is. Swine flu fear sweeps center in San Antonio. Dun, 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 see, you open the border, you bring in all these people. Feds look to ship influx to New York facility. Backlog of 360,000 cases. <clears throat> Stash houses thrive. Ooh, what's that? That's on drudgereport.com. <clears throat> Sorry. A little something going on there, and I hate it. My sinuses keep acting up. From online.wsj, the Wall Street Journal, dot com. Immigrant stash houses thrive along Texas-Mexico border. Some smugglers cram a hundred or more immigrants into a decrepit house. Oh, how interesting. This is what we're faced with, people. This is exactly what we're faced with. Anna Campoy, who wrote for online.wsj.com, wrote this. San Juan, Texas, Sergeant Ronaldo Garcia sat in a surveillance van earlier this month, staking out a white wooden house surrounded by sprawling cactus in this city of 35,000 residents near the U.S.-Mexico border. He wasn't looking for signs of drugs or weapons, but for evidence that it was a stash house packed with illegal immigrants, the hottest illicit commodity for smugglers on the Texas border. Human smuggling is nothing new along the U.S.-Mexico boundary, but federal, state, and local uh, officials report a rise in Texas in recent months as thousands of Central Americans sneak into the country, including many unaccompanied children including many unaccompanied children. The migrants are overwhelming authorities along the Rio Grande. The criminal networks being uncovered in Texas involve large groups of immigrants and increasingly brazen smugglers. They often hold migrants hostage and threaten them with brutality if their friends or relatives don't produce enough money to release them, authorities say. Sometimes they kidnap migrants from rival smuggling gangs. Earlier this month, San Juan police found 43 people trapped inside one suspected stash house. The migrants claimed that their captors threatened to electrocute them if they tried to escape, according to a criminal complaint filed in federal court. Quote, we don't enforce immigration law, but we're obligated to intervene, said Sergeant Garcia, who said his department is now getting five to six calls a day about suspected stash houses. It was busted 21, it has busted 21 such houses in 
the past nine months four more than the previous 12 months. Senator John McCain, Republican of Arizona, said Wednesday that President Barack Obama should make a broader case for Central Americans not to attempt to come to the U.S. <clears throat> Quote, the President of the United States has... Uh, has to openly say, if you come here and you enter this country illegally, you're going to go back, unquote, Mr. McCain said at a Wall Street Journal breakfast gathering in Washington, quote, this is not the message that's being put out on television and radio in Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala, unquote. Considering that John McCain wanted open borders, the rise in smuggling and related violence in Texas hasn't reached the proportions that plagued Arizona last decade, when that region was the hot spot for illegal immigrant traffic into the U.S., but authorities say they are concerned that it is worsening. I'm putting this up on the Wayne S. Pierce Show Facebook page and the Free America Radio Facebook page. I'm going to talk about this later on the Views Express Live today at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here on the Free America Radio Network. Um, <clears throat> lots of things are going on, people. Things change, it seems, every five minutes. And when we, when we overlook the, <clears throat> when we overlook common sense and look at what's going on and and see the problems that we're faced with yeah it can be overwhelming at times but we we have to get a gut check people we have to get a gut check period okay i i, I don't i i don't i don't know okay i don't know where you stand on most of these issues but i i do know this i do know this that at some point, at some point, you're going to have to start seeing reality for what it is. Because obviously, your reality check has bounced. Okay? You obviously don't get the full ramifications of what's happening. The United Nations is coming in, coming into Detroit and, and doing what they're doing and setting up their own laws in Detroit. Why? Because no one else is doing it. They have an emergency manager in Detroit. Well, he started pulling everything out. He said, look, this is what we're going to have to do because we have to do it. Well, he was so overwhelmed with the corruption there that, uh, well, he couldn't do much, you know, <clears throat> and um, I'm uh, going to this, Huffington Post has a story that was from, as soon as it comes up, I'll tell you, uh, from <clears throat> 2013, I'm trying to find a more recent one uh, as well, but uh <clears throat> The um, the things that, that just keep going on over and over and over and over and over, okay, in Detroit is a problem. And it's a problem because, because the people, because the people there cannot and will not stop being stupid. There's a lot of things that are going on that have caused problems with Detroit and the facts of the matter is is that there's the 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 auto companies have left there's a few here and there. there's a few companies there but the rest of it is just total crap okay a lot of pictures you, you've probably seen on Facebook of Detroit where houses and the, the suburbs are all tore up and the downtown cities all tore up and all this and there are some nice places around, but here's this. When you've got a culture of people in an area that big with that much work, and when all the work leaves, you're going to have, you know, part of the city is going to be a ghost town because nobody's going to be there to live or take care of the place or, or whatever. And it's usually going to be on the outskirts of the, uh, of the city, maybe some on the inside. Some buildings downtown may not have people in them or whatever, but it's going to be that way. 
And when you look at the reality of the situation, you can look at Detroit, Chicago, New York City, Miami. You can look at everywhere, Dallas, Texas, Sacramento, California. You can look everywhere and see these empty buildings buildings, and these trashy parts of town and all of this. And your first thought is going to be, man, these people suck. No, it's the city management. It is the city unions. It is all of those people looking to make promises they can't keep. They're talking out of their butts and they're not, they're not willing to take the steps to fulfill their promises or obligations. You go look at all of that. Examine it from that point of view. And you're going to see the problem is the governance of the county, of the cities, of the state. And that's all it is. And the people, you and I, if we're out of work... We got to go where the money's at. We got to go where the work is at. We're got to go, you know, we're going to move out of those areas and those areas are going to look like crap because nobody's there to take care of them. So it's basically the management of the government of that state that trickles down into the counties, that trickles down into the cities and people's hands are tied. They can't do much. I mean, I broadcast right from the biggest little city in the world, Reno, Nevada. And you got to see some of our downtown spots. As a matter of fact, I'll, I'll uh, go out uh, later and, and, well, I've got pictures, actually, from the previous uh, last year, actually, last summer, and video of, of places that are tore up in downtown next to the casinos. You know, and there's some nice spots. Don't get me wrong. There's some nice little, you know, off the strip spots. But I'll tell you, the rest of it doesn't look good. I, we drive around in different areas around town, and we go to these uh, these these plazas, you know, or like the out, you know, the plazas that you go to, a Paradise Plaza right near me over here, about a mile away. And uh, out of twenty, maybe twenty five you know shops that are supposed to be in this plaza the one near me here uh maybe 10 are active and the rest are empty you know so the economy sucks and this is true throughout reno we can go to different plazas i can take pictures there and show you they're empty why because the city government the state government the county government does not know how to operate Okay, they're doing the best they can. I know. I understand that. You're going you're to use that argument against me. They're doing the best they can. They're doing what they're, they're only doing what they're told. They're doing their job. No, you know what their job is supposed to be taking care of us. Not in the sense that, oh, here's a blanket. Here's No, 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 no. If a person like you and I want to start our own business in one of these plazas, you know, one of these empty spots in these plazas, we got to go through a hundred hoops before we even open the doors. And it's going to cost us tens of thousands of dollars to do that. No, 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 no. Here's what you do. Give me that spot for one year free rent. I'll put a business in there and we'll go from there. After a year, we'll negotiate. Other than that, no. You do all the work to make it safe. I'll go in there. I'll open up a business for a year. I'm not going to pay anybody anything as far as the city taxes, whatever, and then at, at the end of the year, we can negotiate. Because somebody's going to be in that spot. <laughs> you know, so there's all, and that might not be the best plan either. So I don't know what the best plan is, okay? All I know is what I see. I don't know how to plan all this and sit down and do this and do that. No. What we have to understand is we have to get our cities growing again. And the only way to do that is to get businesses growing again. How you do that? How are you going to do that in, a, in the economy the way it is? Well, it's not that bad when you look at it from a local aspect. Because you're still going to the mall. You're still going to the movies. You're still here in Reno. You're still going to the casinos. But that's mostly, uh, you know, tourists. So what do you do? You know, what do you do? I don't have the best plans in the world, so email me, freeamericaradio at usa.com. 
freeamericaradio at usa.com. Go to the waynespierceshow.weebly.com site. Check it out, and I shall return right after this. We the people have the power, for we are America. The views expressed live on the Free America Radio Network. FreeAmericaRadio.us Listen to the Diana and Wayne's Grab Bag Potpourri Talk Show Friday nights at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern right here on Spreaker.com You're listening to the Free America Radio Network, and here is the two-minute commentary. Hey, folks, this is Reverend Wayne S. Pierce with your two-minute commentary. A couple of things I'm going to try to squeeze into this two minutes. Uh, first of all, customer, rep- uh, customer service representatives. Okay, you call companies, you have the customer service representative there, they're talking. Chances are, probably somewhere about 80% of the time, they're not going to, uh, they, they speak very broken English, they, they may not understand what you're saying, or all this. You know, it just drives me out of my freaking gourd, okay? It just does. It drives me out of my head because these people need to learn English, period. They want to come over to this country, they learn it extensively. There's a lot of CDs out there. Check it out, folks. Uh, The other thing is, uh, when you have a you know, a a day off and you go to the mall and you go shopping and you deal with customer service reps there, what's the first thing you think about when you go to that counter? (laughs) That is something that you have to think about. Don't always think that it's their fault. It's the store's fault, not theirs. So think about that one. There's good and bad in this commentary. I want to thank you very much for listening to this uh, two-minute commentary. You can email me at freeamericaradio at usa.com. That's freeamericaradio at usa.com. You know, we gotta keep meeting like this. I want to play things a dolly or two. We live in the house across the way. Well, that was new. Is there any insanity in your family? <laughs> Ain't it awful? Attention passengers, this is your captain speaking. Please fasten your seatbelts. The approach will get a little rough. Five, four, three, two, one. Sharing the truth, one fact at a time. Defending liberty and freedom. Fighting the new world order. This is the Free America Radio Network. Hey, you folks, this is the Wayne S. Pierce Show podcast. How are you today? This is the 26th of June, 2014. Yes, lots of things going on today, lots of things happening. I want to make sure that uh, I get all this jammed in here in the next (laughs) few minutes uh, before the uh, next break. But uh, I've been reading from the uh, uh, drudgereport.com, so uh, let's go back over there and check things out. Now, lots of things, if you scroll down on the site... uh, the um, Supreme Court has struck down uh, a lot of things. Mark Sherman over at uh, apnews.myway.com. High Court rebukes Obama on recess appointments. The, the Supreme Court on thir- Thursday, if I can speak, the Supreme Court on Thursday limited the president's power to fill high-level uh, 
vacancies with temporary appointments ruling in favor of Senate Republicans in their partisan clash with President Obama. High Court, uh, the High Court's first ever case involving the Constitution's recess appointments clause ended in a unanimous decision holding that Obama's appointments to the National Labor Relations Board in 2012 without Senate confirmation were illegal. Obama invoked the Constitution's provision giving the president the power to make temporary appointments when the Senate is in recess. Problem is, the court said, the Senate was not actually in a formal recess when Obama acted. Obama had argued that the Senate was on a, an extended holiday break and that the brief sessions it held every three days, what lawmakers call pro forma, were a sham that was intended to prevent him from filling seats on the NLRB. The justices rejected that argument Wednesday. So I'm going to put this on the uh, Wayne S. Pierce Show Facebook page and also the Free America Radio Facebook page. And uh, we want to talk about that a little bit today, too, on the Views Express Live at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. <clears throat> the question is, folks, and I'm going to make this very, very uh, clear, okay? Make this very, very clear, all right? <clears throat> if... For instance, let's put it this way. You have a buddy, and your buddy says, you know, we have to do things a certain way, and there are certain rules, and there are certain, you know, ways that things get done, yada, yada, yada. And your buddy says, hey, I'm going to take a few days off, and, you know, when I come back, we'll we'll take care of all of this other stuff that needs to be taken care of, and and yeah, you you, you know you can find help or whatever you know whatever it is you need to do. And you go away on vacation, and your buddy goes ahead and and, and fills your position. How was how how would that make you feel? You left on vacation. You 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 went away. You're on vacation. You're 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 having fun, and he pretty much kicks you out of a of a business that you started. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> now. This is basically, not, not in the same vein, but this is basically what happened when the, these recess appointments happened, okay? This is, what, this is what happens. This guy's totally and absolutely out of control, he sees some positions that need to be filled because other people left and whatever, and he's got these recess appointments that he has to make and blah, blah, blah. And Congress is not formally out of session, but he makes these recess appointments anyways. Excuse me. Just because one of the congressmen or because the whole Congress like went on a weekend jaunt somewhere to come back on a Monday doesn't mean that the president can come along and say, oh, they're in recess, so, you know, I can do this. No, he can't. Constitution forbids it, period. So the uh, the U.S. Supreme Court went, yeah, <laughs> you can't do that, dude. You know? So, you know, so that that's where that sits. It's on the Wayne S. Pierce Show Facebook page and on the Free America Radio Facebook page. Go check that out. And here's, you want to talk about audacity? Not, not the recording, uh, you know, editor, but... Here's, 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 here's this. Here, here's, oh my God. Here is this. I'm going to put this up too. Same type of story by Adam Liptak at uh, New York Times. Supreme Court curbs president's power 
to make recess appointments. The Supreme Court on Thursday dealt a significant blow to the uh, to executive power, cutting back on the president's power to issue recess appointments during brief breaks in the Senate's work. Remember, I told you weekend jaunt, you know, come back. I'm going to put this up there too because it's a different view. It's from the New York Times, and I'm going to put this on the. Uh, up on the Free America Radio and on the Wayne S. Pierce Show Facebook pages. And uh, this is something for you to take a look at. Um, just another view, you know. Just another another view of the same story. The same bull crap that's coming out of Washington, D.C. Uh, but again, you know, if you were, if you started a company but had to go somewhere to do something for the company... And you told your buddy, hey, you know, let's do this, let's do that. Okay, while you're gone, your buddy kicked you out of the company. What? <laughs> you know, I don't know. Anyway, drudgereport.com. Uh, drink water to cut obesity, health experts say. Interesting. Yahoo boss responds to critics after sleeping through dinner with execs. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Let's take a look at this one from cdndefense1.com. The military is about to get new spy glasses. This is by Patrick Tucker over at defense1.com. He's a technology editor for Defense One. He's also the author of The Naked Future, What Happens in a World That Anticipates Your Every Move, uh, current uh, 2014. Previously, Tucker was deputy editor of The Futurist, where he served for nine years. Uh, so I think he knows what he's talking about. Getting secret information to specific people, like the location of the nearest nuclear power plant in a way that doesn't draw attention from outside is a classic spy problem. Another one is giving agents the ability to match names to faces in a real world. At blackjack tables and fancy soirees and other places, spies frequent. The Defense Department is buying some new spy specs to give spooks in the field an intelligence edge over everybody else. The glasses, called simply the X6, are from San Francisco-based Osterhout Design Group. They look like the love child of uh, Google Glass and the uh, Oculus Rift, providing more information to the wearer than the small window of Google's much maligned headset, but not obstructing vision like the Oculus Rift, admitted, admittedly for spy glasses, they lack certain subtlety. Uh, at a recent innovation symposium at Defense Intelligence Agency headquarters in Washington, D.C., Bobby King, vice president of special projects of Osterhout, demonstrated how the headset provides situational intelligence. Defense One looked through the glasses at a static two-dimensional map and suddenly structures in three dimensions related to objects of interest. Uh, suddenly structures appeared in three dimensions related to objects of interest. King confirmed that the map was just a regular print of a satellite photograph. With that particular app, the glasses send information to a server that then process the image against others to determine the location depicted. The glasses then present data from the database visually in the form of structures, special stru instructions, clues, etc. The view was smarter and more useful than what, would, uh, what you would see with Google Glass, but didn't get in the way of the user's ability to actually see like a clunky virtual reality headset. I'm putting this up on the Facebook pages as well. <clears throat> the um, <clears throat> the things that you have to understand, folks, is this. They're going to do everything they can in whatever way they see fit to control you every single day. Okay? There's no, no question about that, folks. They're going to do this. And what we have to do is we have to make sure that they don't. Now, how can we do that? Well, we can, uh, by exposing these things, by doing what we do 
there is that opportunity for us to um, <clears throat> for us to stop most of these things happening. Now, can we shut down plants where these spy, you know, where, where these where these spy glasses are are made or anything? No. But we can severely slow their business by exposing what they are. And I guarantee you there is one thing on the back of the minds of these global elites. And I'm going to say it right here and right now. They want to kill us. What? Yeah. They want to kill us. And what really has these people up in arms and really, really pissed off right now is the fact that more and more information is getting out. More and more information is being leaked from their own, their own arenas, their own offices, their own little cliques, getting out to the general public, getting out to the uh, independent media, to the alternative media, and we're exposing them left and right, and they're pissed off by it. That's why... They want. Uh, that's why there is there is a, a move for uh, uh, the elites in this country to <clears throat> there's a move to put forth. Well, let's just say regulation and policies from the United Nations to take over everything that we do as far as the media is concerned, the the alternative independent media is concerned, to shut us down. And I'll give you a prime example. UK Column right now has been, well, shut down essentially in terms of their YouTube channel because they expose the truth with the facts and they've blackened the eyes of the UK royalty and and all of the people that are, you know, running that whole charade. Okay? So now they basically are, you know, their hands are tied. So instead of, you know, uh you know, just bowing down to the to the queen of England and and, you know, ADVOT is their version of RFCC. They, uh, they, they gave the big middle finger to them and just said, screw you people, we're going to continue doing what we do. So you and I in the alternative independent media need to do what we need to do, and that's just the way it is. And we cannot stop. We are on a roll now. We are exposing these buttheads for what they are. These, these criminals in Washington, D.C., for who they are, and we're exposing them for the asshats they are, okay? But the global elites want to kill us. Don't believe me? Go to your favorite search engine and look up the Georgia Guidestones. Go look that up. And if you don't believe that, just look in history. We set up our own government, along with British and other governments, set up Mao Zedong. We set up Hitler. We set up Khrushchev. We set up uh, Saddam Hussein, Muammar Gaddafi. We set them up. We, our country, our CIA, our military industrial complex did this. Okay? Our intelligence operatives did this. But then they got a big head on their shoulders and said, we're not going to play with you anymore, and we had to go in and take them out. So I don't want to hear it anymore. You people need to do your research. You need to do your homework. You need to see just how bad this truly is. And if you're just, you know, walking around going, well, what do we do to prepare? Why are you saying that? Whoa, what are you doing? I got family members that are telling me, you know, that uh, or 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 I would say they're asking me questions. 
But they're asking me in a very, well, not really asking me, they're, they're making statements with questions, but in those statements they're mocking me and saying that I don't know, basically implying that I don't know what I'm talking about. Or saying that, you know, there are other people that are awake and aware of what's going on, so why are you, you know, what, what do we need to prepare for? Well, <laughs> at any moment in time, something could happen. Are you prepared? I don't know. Are you? That's something you have to ask yourself. Email me, freeamericaradio at usa.com, freeamericaradio at usa.com. The Wayne S. Pierce Show dot Weebly dot com is the website, and I shall return in a moment. What else do you have to do on a Friday night? Why not come check out Diana and Wayne's Grab Bag Potpourri Talk Show at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on Spreaker.com. For all you independent artists, musicians, and filmmakers, there is a place for you. Radio Rock 92.6 The Blitz. Go to RadioRockTheBlitz.blogspot.com. This is the Free America Radio Network. For more information, go to freeamericaradio.us or email us at freeamericaradio at usa.com. Hey, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is the Wayne S. Pure Show podcast. And uh, <clears throat> I am um, going to wrap up the show here in just a few <clears throat> and uh, let you know, first of all, that you can come listen to me on the Views Express Live uh, at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on Free America Radio Network at freeamericaradio.us. And um, to wrap it up, I want to take back to the Drudge Report because there was a few things I uh, uh, saw on there that just, you know, well, <clears throat> kind of makes you think. You know what I mean? kind of makes you think a little bit. And if I can get back to the Drudge Report, here we go. Now, let me, first of all, ask you a, a question. Well, here's one. I was just looking at a couple of headlines there on Drudge Report, and I thought, well, this one's a lot more important than what I was about ready to read, but... This affects you as well. From Tampa.CBSLocal.com, vet could lose home for displaying small U.S. flag in front yard because it violates home display rules. That is a housing authority issue, and a housing authority, uh, homeowners, uh, homeowners association uh, need to go away. Homeowners, uh, homeowners associations need to go away, period, end of sentence. They are fascist, dictatorial, they serve no purpose, they violate every single freaking civil right law there is, and that's just the way it is. And don't give me this stupid excuse like, well, you signed up for it, you went into that neighborhood and bought that house, you knew what you were getting into. No, 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 Done. You're stupid. Do not, do not use that stupid excuse with me because it isn't. You need to go into these homeowners associations offices. You need to lay down the Constitution in front of them and say, if you don't follow this, I'm going to sue your ass into the ground. Because you are violating my civil rights, you are violating my constitutional rights, and that's just the way it is. You need to stop, and that's just the way it is, period. If you don't like it, go away. We like this neighborhood, but we don't like you. Now go away. Now a lot of them, and there have been people in these neighborhoods with homeowners associations that have sued the homeowners associations and won. 
because these homeowners associations are nothing more than dictatorial uh, fascist pieces of crap that absolutely positively do not know anything about the Constitution and would rather take your money, you know, and that's just the way it is. Now, let me give you this little caveat. I've never lived in a neighborhood with a homeowners association. Then why are you saying anything? Because of the policies. Homeowners Association, Housing Authority, any type of quote-unquote authority that they have over you is a complete and utter violation of your civil rights and constitutional protections, period, end of sentence. Don't like it? What are you going to do about it? What? Whine and bitch and moan and groan and, and curl up in the corner of your house and just say, there's nothing I can do about it. Yes, there is. You go to the offices, you throw the Constitution in front of them, and you tell them this is what you're going to go by. They don't like that. Let me go back to this. A uh, vet could lose home over displaying small U.S. flag in front yard because it violates home display rules. Tampa, Florida. A veteran could lose his home because of a small American flag he placed in a flower pot in front of his house. Larry Murphy explained that his homeowners association, see, in the Sweetwater community wants him to remove remove the flag because it violates home display rules. Furthermore, he is facing an $8,000 in fines if he doesn't take it out of his flower pot. Quote, I want it to go away. It's such a minor little thing and they keep coming after me. Unquote, Murphy told WAWS. Quote, they just sent me a letter that says I owe them $8,000 and they put a foreclosure lien on my house, unquote. Murphy has 30 days to pay the fines and, re- and remove the flag or the homeowners association will move forward with foreclosure. The veteran had a similar fight with the homeowners association last year when he filed the lawsuit, which was settled out of court. Now the homeowners association flag display rules have been rewritten since Florida State 720 or excuse me, Florida Statute 720.304, Section 2A, states that, quote, any homeowner may display one portable, removable U.S. flag, United States flag, in a respectful manner, not larger than four and a half feet by six feet, regardless of any uh, covenants, restrictions, bylaws, rules, or requirements of the homeowners association unquote murphy said he won't stop until he can fly the flag freely at his home quote when i first moved here i loved it it was wonderful but i got where i i'm being nitpicked more and more i have lost a lot of friends and neighbors moving out i don't want to move unquote he told w a w s i'm putting that up on the wayne s pierce show and on the uh free america radio uh facebook page And I want to say this to all you people living in uh, areas that you have a homeowners association. It's time you gather all together and file a massive multi-billion dollar lawsuit against them. They need to go away and they need to go away now. Period. End of sentence. Now, a lot of people say, well, since you've never lived in those areas or under a homeowner's association, how do you know how they work? It's called doing my homework and actually reading. So I don't want to hear it anymore. Okay? I don't want to hear it anymore. You people are stupid who live in these places that won't stand up to these fascist pieces of trash. Period. You know, I, I, I just, I cannot, and I'm going to say this again, and I've said it before in previous broadcasts, I'm done with stupid people. Well, people aren't stupid. Yeah, they are. If they are the types of people that work for a company that want to implement fascist dictatorial policies over everybody else, including the casinos here in Reno, Nevada, and any casino in America, then you've got a problem and you're the stupidest pieces of trash walking on the face of the planet. You don't know the Constitution, you don't know freedom, you don't know liberty, you don't know security, you don't know any of that. All you care about is your own little narcissistic little mindset of, oh, I've got control control over people. Okay, period. 
That's what you have. That is where you're at. That is your mindset. Whether it's homeowners association, the housing authority, or casino bosses, or whatever, or bosses in general. You need to understand that the people are going to get really, 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 really pissed off. And they're going to make sure that your business suffers. And they're going to do everything they can within their power, legally and peacefully, to make sure your business fails. Or is severely severely hurt like i said i've read stories where people who live in these places that have homeowners associations have sued them and won the homeowners association has no right to come in and foreclose on your home only the bank or the mortgage company unless there's a backdoor deal with these homeowners associations who get cash, in other words, gets you know cash under the table for selling these homes that they foreclose on. You know what I'm saying? See how corrupt they are? I don't know that for sure. I'm just speculating that may not happen. I don't know. Okay? Just saying... You see, I get pissed off about everything. When when my rights, your rights, when our constitutional protections are being blatantly violated, yeah, I get a little pissed off. What about you? Okay. Oh, speaking of constitution, holy mackerel, this is happening in Iraqi city. Yes. Sharon Swartz over at The Blaze wrote this, a troubling new report regarding Christians in an Iraqi city. Council of High Commission. Council of High Commission for Human Rights in Iraq member uh, Salama al Kafaji, I believe, sorry, <laughs> told the Arabic language uh, Al Sumeria News that ISIS has begun imposing the tax known as Jizya. I believe, J-I-Z-Y-A, I don't know, on Christians who remained in Mosul after the militant group seized the city earlier this month. The Assyrian International News Agency summarized the report on its English-language website. ISIS is opposing on Christians a minimum payment of $250 with amount varying depending on the type of work profession performed by Christian citizens, unquote. Quote, the economic situation in Mosul is extremely difficult and there are no financial resources or job opportunities except for vegetable shops. Any other businesses are non-existent. Citizens are at a loss now as to how to make ends meet. How can they pay those amounts to ISIS, unquote? This is going up on the Wayne S. Pierce Show and Free America Radio website. As a matter of fact, this is going to go on the main feed because I believe people need to see this. <clears throat> I uh, th- This is in Iraq, folks. Th- this stuff is happening in, a, in Mosul. Okay? <clears throat> and if it happens there, guaranteed... Somewhere down the line, not tomorrow, not next week, possibly not next year, churches here and Christians here are going to be taxed. Now, some people would say, well, churches are making millions and millions of dollars a year being tax exempt. They should pay taxes. Really? I would even go farther than that and say, well, since, um, since the... Politicians in Washington, D.C. are not following the Constitution at all. What difference does it make? I know. Sorry, I channeled Hillary Clinton. But <clears throat> it is. It is what it is. Okay? As soon as soon as our president feels the need to do as soon as he feels it has to happen he'll impose martial law okay he'll impose martial law now i cannot and will not 
accept any excuses from anybody that says, well, I don't want to get up and protest because, you know, that's kind of inconvenient if I get arrested and go to jail. Let me put it to you this way. In the fight for the independence from Britain in 1775-1776, I think it started like 1773, we had people saying the same thing back then. We had people saying, well, I don't want to get thrown in jail, I don't want to get shot, I don't want to whatever, you know, whatever it may have been. But look where we are 238 years later. We're right back at the same spot. Now it's our own government, our Washington, D.C., our own politicians, not some, you know, foreign country. Oh, wait, maybe it is. Think of it this way, folks. If you don't stand up for what you believe in, for the rights that you have, you're going to lose them. Don't take them for granted. Reagan said we had to fight for them. Reagan said that this was the last bastion of freedom, and there's no other place in the world like this, ever, and never will be. So we have to take care of our own. We have to take care of our country. This is it. This is all you've got, folks. Bottom line is, is if you don't get up off your ass and go out and do something, and like Brian Lang over at LifeTruthRadio.com says, stand up, speak out, and get involved. If you don't do that, you're screwed. What if we do it? We're screwed anyway. Well, okay, Mr. I lack a backbone and balls to stand up for my freedom. Why don't you just go stick your head in the sand? You know? I spent too many years researching the shadow government that actually runs the United States of America, and that would be the Rothschilds and anybody, you know, that is that is overseeing this portion of the world in the Bilderberg group that met just a few months ago, or last month. There's so many things that are going on, there's so many avenues that we can take to change the destiny of America and take it out of the hands of the new world order and bring it back to the people that we see these avenues we're, we're standing at, 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 a, at a, a point at which we see three or four or five or ten different roads we can go down but the question is are you willing to take that chance are you willing to put on your big boy pants your big girl pants and get a step in I don't know too many people that do. Brian Lang and James Neighbors over at, uh, 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 what is that, uh, overpassesforamerica.com. They do. They get out every weekend. They're out doing stuff every weekend. And the bottom line is, is we have to start getting out, stepping up, speaking out and getting involved. We have to get out there and do what we have to do. Freedom for everyone. Tyranny for no one. I put that on my Facebook page, and you can use that, by the way. Go ahead. Freedom for everyone, tyranny for no one. Go ahead, use that. That's all right. I'll use it. No big deal. Bottom line is, is you've got to get up off your damn ass and go do something. Well, what are you doing? Oh, believe me, I got things a-brewing. Okay? Okay. I got I got some ideas. But I'm here, right here, hopefully, motivating you to go get something done. I'm here giving you the information and the roadmap to go and get things done. Am I going to do that? Yes. I'm going to go out and do stuff. Yes. Am I worried that I might get arrested or whatever? Yes. Does it matter to me? No. Because it has to be done. It has to be done, okay? It has to be done. And as far as I'm concerned, anybody that says, well, you know, I, I'm just, I don't want to be inconvenienced, uh, they're a wuss. You might as well just curl up in the corner of your house and cry like a freaking baby when the uh, militarized law enforcement comes breaking down your door and, uh, you know, separating your family and taking them off to FEMA camp somewhere. Because that's all, 
That's all you're going to be able to do because you're a wimp. You're a wuss. You're a pussy. You're, yes, I said it. What are you going to do about it? Huh? Step up, folks. Step up. Do what. Do the right thing to protect your county, your family, your city, your state, and your government. Your 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 United States of America. Piss off, Washington D.C. We're going to do what we want. Period. Don't like it? Tough. Free America Radio at USA dot com is the email address. Free America Radio at USA dot com. The Wayne S. Pierce Show. Weebly.com is the website. I will talk to you later. Mm-hmm.